Unfortunately, I have to tear it all apart. A good, foggy, chilly morning this morning to you guys. I hope you're having some beautiful weather like this. 49 degrees out this morning, 82 for a high today. It's gonna be a warm one. I got my shorts on. It's weird not having country right here. Usually when I'm doing my morning chores, I'm feeding country, giving them treats. But we just have the turkeys and the goats and then our egg layers up there for this area. Then in the woods now, we have country with Miles and the three ladies. Gina's inside milking Azalea. We'll let Azalea and Cookie out when she's done. Then we got the pigs over here. I'll feed them next. It's a beautiful morning on the homestead. Hope you guys are having a nice fall. It's been beautiful, gorgeous, and dry here lately. I'm loving it. What about you, Brutus? You been liking the weather? You have, haven't you? You guys coming for some apples? Freeman says, yep. Country. Like beauty. How'd you like the woods for the first night, country? Hey, we just want to mention that we have a new coffee drop. Our campfire decaf is available again. Yay. It has been sold out for a while. We were waiting for a new batch of beans to come in. And the new harvest was harvested. The beans have showed up. It's one of my favorite coffees that we have. It's the campfire decaf. We also have our in the woods, dark roast. We have our Martin Homestead cold brew, and we have our Homestead Sunrise, which is a light roast. They are all delicious. They're all freshly roasted, and they're gonna be live on the website today when you're watching the video, September 24th. And if you're a member to the channel, when you get the video going live to you guys, early access, the coffee is available for you guys at that point too. So when you're watching this video, the coffee is live. So get on there and get it before it sells out because it usually sells out pretty quickly. So we also do have some merch on our website. We have t-shirts and it's getting to the cool fall season. So we have nice sweatshirts and they are nice and warm. We do recommend sizing up if you do get a sweatshirt because if you don't like it a little bit tight on the sleeves, if you like a relaxed fit, do a size up. Yeah, I'm usually a large. My t-shirt size is a large and this is an extra large and it fits perfect. I don't know about you guys, but I love sweatshirt weather and that also means it's good, warm coffee weather. But I love my cold brew all the time, so it's gonna be hard to switch that one. I'll just have to make sure I have an extra sweatshirt or two on when I'm drinking my cold brew. Maybe that's your afternoon snack. And there you go. <laughs> if you guys wanna get yourself some coffee, go to lumnaacres.com. We'll also have it linked down below. Let us know if you get a bag of coffee, how you like it, and which one is your favorite. Thanks to everybody who has purchased the coffee in the past. Now, let's get on with the video. All right, we need to start tearing it all apart. Tearing it all apart? Yep. We're going to figure out how we're going to do it. So when we built the barn, we built it knowing that we were going to want to tear stuff apart and add on. So we need to figure out this backside here. We're going to tear apart the pig pen. I'm not sure if we're going to take the siding off. I think for now we'll leave it on if we can. We want to drop down and do another roof, pitch this way. And then in here we want to do an eave overhang. And we're gonna, I don't know if we're gonna go 10 feet or 12 feet. We'll figure that out as we're working it. So we gotta get all of the gravel brought down to the level we need, get a concrete pad poured. And in here, we got, we'll probably have a little bit more hay storage on this end. And then the big goal, the big reason we wanna do this is we wanna have a place for a run for our chickens in the winter time. We're sick of not getting a steady supply of eggs in the winter. So this spring we built the chicken coop inside and we used it as the brooder, worked awesome. That'll be the winter chicken coop, but we also wanna have a run for the chickens to be in during the winter. So we'll have an area out here for them. And then we're gonna do the same thing with the pigs. We'll have an area out here. We got the pig pen inside and then they'll be able to come out and have a run out here. And then we'll have an open in out run on the other end. And then on that end, that'll probably be an open run that the cows can come in and out of if needed. This is all just kinda still figuring everything out in the he my head, but ideally it'd be nice to have a little area for the cows to get in and out of the wind if needed. That might not 
be a case at all. That might just all be for the pigs, but then we want an area for the pigs, the chickens, and then just a little bit of hay storage on this end. So we got to tear out the pig pen. We got most of that taken down, but not all of it. And then we got to start grading and getting ready to pour concrete. All right, so once we get this all taken down, we can start figuring out if we want to go 10 feet or 12 feet. I think the biggest deciding factor is, is how much room we have over here. Jeez. I had to bust out the old T-post puller. One of you guys sent this up years ago and it works so good. You struggle pulling them out by hand and then this is so effortless. But you always like to try to struggle at first. Yes, because you're like, oh, I can get them out. That's easy. I don't need to go get a tool. And then it's like, oh yeah, I do. So this year we were training the pigs to electric fence. We did it out here. We made a makeshift run. So next year we'll be able to already have an outside run-ish outside. And then we can just train them to electric fence in here. So that'll be nice. We finally get to start this project because it's been dry. It's been muddy and wet and we can't work back here and do concrete if there's rain in the forecast because all the rain's gonna come off of the roof and land here. So right That's now true. we have a good window of dry weather, no rain in the forecast. So hopefully we can get this all excavated, stone put down, the grain, the grade done, and then get the concrete poured before any rain comes in. And then we can get the roof up. And then after the roof is up, if we get rain, it's okay. It doesn't matter. It don't matter at that point. So Brutus won't come past that, but that gate, you left it open a little and he walked right through. It's so right. funny. He does not like electric fence. Nope, He's been he zapped before. The trees in the last couple of days have become so beautiful. And the next couple of days are gonna get even better and brighter, I think. It's really pretty. I can't even believe just in a couple of days, the difference. I, I know it happens every year, but every time I get amazed. So this side of the building gets really good sun first thing in the morning all the way to later afternoon. So let me know if, what you think we should do. We're either gonna tin it all to match the building or I'm maybe thinking go halfway up or three quarters of the way, two thirds of the way up with tin on the bottom and then maybe doing the plastic corrugated siding so that way it'll let the sun in and warm up the animals the first thing in the morning. I haven't decided yet. All right, now I gotta go grab the mower, get this mowed back here, and then we gotta set up the laser and start shooting some grade levels and see what we need to do. All right, so that mowed nicely. It's actually the first time I've mowed it because it's been so muddy this year. I haven't wanted to run it up. This is an area that we hydro seeded. We had a lot of people asking how the, how the hydro seeding has been doing. That grass is coming in good. The bank that was all hydro seeded, that's coming in really good. And then on the other side, that was hydro seeded as well. And that's coming in good. So this actually looks a lot better now that we mowed it, which is nice. So now we gotta start shooting some grade and figuring out what our 
elevations need to be for our different phases. When we design these buildings or anytime we design a building or have a purpose for a building, we always try to think of what about in the future. So we did always know that we wanted to do a run off the back here and then we also built it so that we could build stalls or something over. We could expand this barn if we wanted to, needed to in the future. All right, we gotta set up our laser transit. This will shoot a beam and then we can adjust the reader end for the different elevations we want. So I'm gonna shoot a couple of different grades. I'll first get the grade of the elevation of the concrete pad for the barn. But I believe we're gonna drop this one down a few inches so it's a step. I just gotta start shooting grades and make sure everything's gonna work. This laser level, this was something that Al had hemmed and hawed about getting for a really long time. And he finally had broke down, it was a couple years ago when we were building the house. Yeah, I hemmed and hard about getting when we were building the greenhouse. That was probably, what, three or four years ago now, and I didn't. And I was like, no, once we're done with this project, we're not going to need it. And then I hemmed and hard for a couple other projects, maybe the other barns, I don't remember. But we needed it when we were doing the septic system. We had to have it, so that's when we bought it. And we've used this thing so many times. Every time I'm like, oh, we're done with it, we're never going to use it again. I always take it out for the next project, and I'm always using it. Definitely something I should have bought years ago. It self levels itself, so you don't have to worry about getting it perfectly straight. You gotta get the base somewhat level because if it's too much out of level, it can't self level. But if you get it close, it'll self level itself right here. And then when it's done, this will start spinning. So what it's doing is it's shooting a laser at this height that is level. So then you go ahead and you set your, your reader up where you want it for your height. So then you can go around and check your grade to see where you are. I want to get an elevation height for out there. I'm a visual guy, so I need to visually see out there where exactly this height would be and then drop it down from there. Because eyeballing that distance, you can get close, but you're not going to get 100% accurate. So I just like to get a physical one, see it, and then I can make my decisions from, from there. So let's see, if we come out, that's eight, that's 10. This would be 12 feet. Wow. Which is, we want that because we've got to add stone. Okay. Okay, so we're about 13 inches here off of the grade, the top of the slab. So, I'm going to put a stone here. I'm glad that you have a rock. Right. Available. So I want to go back there now and measure because no matter what we do is we want to put stone down. This soil has a lot of clay in it and clay holds water. So we're doing floating slabs. And if you can get, you want to have drainage. So if we put the stone down, we don't have to worry about the frost heaving it. So that's why we put a lot of stone down. So let's go down this way and see. Okay, so 12. So our slab's gonna be six inches thick. So if we are 12 inches off, that means six inches of stone, and then six inches of concrete would be perfect, but we don't wanna go that height. I actually wanna drop it down after we get some more of these measurements. And basically below the trim is where I wanna have it. So, so that how way, you know? I'll go set my, my height of this for that. Unless I'm mistaken, this is probably around a year that we actually did the concrete pad for the barn itself, so. All right, we picked up our mess we had over here. We had some scrap metal. We had some leftover tin from doing the inside. A bunch of just random parts and pieces over here. So we got that all picked up. I had a bunch of pellets. I was going to get rid of them, but I'm actually going to need them shortly. So luckily I hadn't gotten rid of them yet. We're we'll gonna be using those to get them all stacked up. We're gonna need them hopefully sometime this week down below. So yeah, we got this all cleaned up. Now we gotta get the stakes in, get everything squared off. I think going 12 feet is gonna be a good width. I think 10 feet would be too narrow. So basically if we go 12 feet, you'd be able to use these stalls for any large livestock if you needed to. I am looking forward to having eggs this winter. It's gonna be nice to have an indoor ish run for the chickens so hopefully they'll stay laying eggs all winter long
They are also new chicks, so. Yep. And then it'll be nice to have an area over here too, if for some reason we need another stall for a cow. So 12 feet. Don't touch the fence, Al. It'll hurt. Or if we need a stall in the springtime for the Highland cattle's calving, or when yeah. they have their babies, they can come right in here. They can have their babies over on this side. That's a good idea. So we're always going to need more room than you think. Good morning. It's nice and foggy again. Had to stop working yesterday. I had to get ready for a podcast homestead shop talk that me, Jason from Soda Land and Ben from Holler Homestead do weekly. It's always a fun conversation. Would you look at that, son? Do we wake you? You're kind of slow. All right, so I got to thinking we need to take all of the siding off before we no. go any further. Yeah, the siding will get covered in concrete when we're pouring and there's a chance we could hit it while we're grading. So we're better off just taking it off now and then We'll use that to build our roof off of and we don't have to put extra six by sixes up there. We can just do our headers right off of that wall. So it'll save us money. It'll save us space because we won't have to have another six inches of building material in between. So that's not gonna, time. It's just going to take us eh, probably in the long run. It will save us time. It's just we got to do that now before we can start doing our grading. So time to get to it. I'll start on this end. The I'll whole way. Out. The whole way. It's got to come down. Oh, this is a bummer. I was hoping we weren't going to have to take the siding off, but it does make sense. We'll have to stack it nice and neat on top of each other, get a good pile of it going. I'll probably go, I think we got a long one. I think we have one long pallet out back that has a couple of pieces of metal on it. I'll take those pieces of metal off and we'll stack these on it and then we can move it around. And then when we're done, we can put it back on. Luckily, the inside is all sided. So when we take this off, we're not exposing the inside oh, of the true. barn to nothing. We still have metal siding. We'll be able to see the framing work of the barn, but there's siding in there, so we don't got to worry about the barn being exposed. There, we'll stack all of the siding on this. like that. That was easy. Hey wasp. Oh really? Now I get over there but I shut the energizer off so I don't touch the fence and or fall off into it. Get a little zip zap. Right. I'm just gonna unplug it. You're gonna double double so. security it. You're gonna double make sure. Yeah. Double make sure that it's not off. Well, I can't see the screen, so I don't know if I really got it off like the button. I think you did. I feel like we just put this up the other day. I mean, it's been a couple days. Oh. So we were just sitting down at breakfast, figuring out different dates for breeding the pigs and when we would have piglets. And then we're in the woods this morning, giving the in the woods cows treats. Black Beauty was in heat, so we're just figuring out like when everybody will be coming in and having either calving or having their piglets. I'm like, yeah, we gotta make sure that this area is done so we have a place for the sowing to go on and then for calving to go on when it's in the colder weather. So we gotta make sure we get this done. Hey, look at 
look at that. All right, let's get the metal moved out of our way. just reshooting some grades. That's gonna be the height of the concrete slab. We had talked about maybe doing piers and just doing a dirt run. So when I say piers, burying in some concrete posts in the ground to set our wooden posts on top of. But if we do that, we don't plan on putting a floor in the building and we wanna have a chicken coop and we wanna have a run. So I don't wanna have a dirt floor in a chicken coop with being suspended off the ground by piers because then any critter could get in there a lot easier. So if we do a concrete floor, we can seal it good like this. We don't gotta worry about foxes or anything like that digging in, weasels digging in and trying to get our chickens in the winter.
10 inches. And then, perfect. We are good. So I just gotta clean up this edge, bring that all in, and then we'll, be, we'll have all of the natural soil removed that we need to remove. And we'll be able to stop bringing in some gravel. All right, I get the first initial grade done. We're gonna go around and check it, but I need to bring some things down below and get ready for a delivery in the morning. So we're gonna halt on this. We'll pick this up in the morning, but I'm gonna bring a few things down below. So this is where I'm gonna end this video. Thanks for coming along on our homesteading journey. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up, share, subscribe, and we'll see you right back here in the next video. Bye.